Hey, it's Chris. How do you pick the best note-taking app for yourself? It's a question that I asked myself recently as I began looking to kind of get a fresh start, start over with my note-taking system, be a little bit more purposeful with it. So the good news for you is that I've already put a lot of thought and effort into it, did all the research, and now I'm just gonna share my findings with you, kind of give you a cheat sheet. Now today's video is definitely gonna be more informative and less of a demo of the top apps as I see them, Apple Notes, Notion, Obsidian, and Notability. And as we talk about things like their strengths and weaknesses and unique selling points and Apple Pencil compatibility, things like pricing and privacy, we're gonna cover all that. You're also gonna get a nice look at how I do things inside my productivity setup, including how a note-taking app fits into my system and the role that it plays. But I think the most natural place for you to begin thinking about this is what you want a notes app to do in the first place. What do you wanna use it for? So some people use a notes app to kind of stash anything and everything, and it's a bit chaotic. Other people like to use a notes app for just anything text related, could even be writing in their notes app. And then another common usage is as a knowledge management system, which is very orderly. Or you might've heard of people referring to this as building a second brain or creating a digital knowledge garden. It goes by many names. In any case, it's well worth considering how you want your notes app to fit into your information processing pipeline, or the six C's as I like to call it. You know, whenever you're dealing with information, you're gonna kind of have three phases, your pre-production, your production, and your post-production. So in the pre-production phase, I like to capture information. In the production phase, I curate, conceptualize, and then actually create. In the post-production phase, I cache it, I store it, and I also cascade it, meaning I publish it. Now, I'm not sure what works best for you, but I like to use very specific tailor-made apps for each of those phases. In the pre-production phase, I like to use drafts, my mind, and readwise to capture things. In production, I start with Muse, move it into my node, hit Jasper, my AI writing assistant, which I'll link up down below for you. In post-production, after I've created something, I will store it in a notes app like Notion, that's what I'm using right now, and then I will publish it, cascade it to social media or the web. So that's where note-taking app really fits into my workflow in the post-production phase. So right now, Notion, you can see, is where I store my knowledge assets. Now, however you integrate a notes app into your workflow, you're gonna have to organize the information that goes there. So you wanna think about this ahead of time. I personally, to give you an example, I'm using the Para framework. So Para stands for projects, areas, resources, and an archive. So projects are things with deadlines. Areas are where I have ongoing responsibilities. Resources are just things I'm interested in. And an archive is, of course, where I put all the finished and unused things. All right, so let's talk about Apple Notes First. One of the benefits of Apple Notes is that it's deeply integrated into Apple's ecosystems. And that gives you the unparalleled ability to make things like quick notes, no matter what page or app you might be in. Then you also have the really cool ability to create smart folders, which will let you auto-populate folders based on tags and other traits. And you can see I've actually got several set up in my Apple Notes right here, including one that's for handwritten notes. So I can just suck every handwritten note right into that smart folder and find it at the top. There's also incredible Apple Pencil support, which includes the ability to search your handwritten notes with OCR capabilities, which is great, and even to convert your handwriting into tags that will work with the smart folders. And what I really love about Apple Notes is that it feels balanced for whatever input method you prefer. So if you like to type, it feels great. If you like to use the Apple Pencil, that feels great here as well. Let's talk about Notion next, which is, in a word, comprehensive. Notion is super customizable and it tries to be kind of a all-in-one, do almost anything sort of app. So it's not just about documents, you can work with databases here, you can put a Kanban board in, and you can also publish select Notion pages online. So not only is Notion for note-taking, but it's also for task management and project management. And here's something that a lot of people love, there are tons of both free and paid integrations that you can use to spice up the Notion experience, from tools to automation, website stuff, blog stuff, templates, CMS, the list goes on. And then there's Obsidian, which is a very minimalistic, lightweight app that's very suited to deep thinking. Now, as you can see here, this is a plain text knowledge base app that uses Markdown for styling. But perhaps the biggest draw here is the knowledge graph feature, which lets you link your thinking and see how all your thoughts connect. And what's super unique about Obsidian is that all the files are stored in a local 
folder on your device, or you could store it in iCloud as well, but that means it's future-proof. It's just marked down plain text, so if Obsidian ever goes out of business, you don't have to worry about it. You got all your notes right there. It's also good to know that there are over 800 plugins for Obsidian, so you can customize the heck out of it. And with the paid add-on, you can also publish select notes online as well. And that brings us to Notability, which is a stylus-first app, no doubt about it. And it's for those who prefer to handwrite or sketch most of the time, but also like to occasionally type. A lot of students like Notability, so do people who are in meetings. That's because there's an option to record audio and sync it so you can replay both your notes and the audio at the same time. Also, if you're really into annotating PDFs, if that's where your notes kind of take you, Notability is a no-brainer there. Now, if all this kind of stuff is really interesting to you and you'd like to learn more about how to be more productive within the Apple ecosystem, I am working on a productivity course, gonna be coming out soon. There's a place in the description where you can give me your email and I'll ping you when that's live. But a notes app is really only as good as its continued development. So let's talk about some recent updates. One place where Apple Notes is really innovating is with FaceTime collaboration. So if you would like to be making a note with somebody else and see their face at the same time while you're looking at the same thing, that's pretty cool. Apple also just added the ability to straighten out your handwriting, which is kind of cool. And in the Apple Pencil Toolkit, they also added this new fountain pen option, which I gotta tell you, I'm obsessed with. I really love the way this thing writes. I would say it's the definition of smooth. Now something that the team at Notion has been working on lately is introducing Notion AI. You'll get very basic AI integration here so you can have it write things for you, outline, brainstorm, etc. There's no chat GTP style chat feature where you can chat with the AI in Notion like there is with Jasper, Jasper Chat. So I would still steer you towards Jasper and integrate it. As you see here in my pre-production, production and post-production framework, I'm using AI at every single point to optimize what it is that I'm working on. So Notion AI, cool, it's a wait list right now, Jasper Chat available right now. Obsidian recently debuted a really interesting feature called Obsidian Canvas, which is kind of their take on the infinite workspace. So it's kind of like Apple's Freeform, which I made a whole video about recently and you should check it out if you haven't seen it yet to get familiar with it, I'll link it up. But it's missing some key features for me, in particular, Apple Pencil support. Really a bummer, I hope that comes in the future. For Notability's part, they recently came out with the Notability Gallery feature, which lets you sort through and search for other people's notes on a variety of topics, say chemistry notes, for instance. And there's also a bunch of templates there, and the idea is that anyone can publish anything they want to. So if you wanna share your work with the Notability community, you can. If you wanna get stuff, from other Notability users and benefit from notes that they've already taken and templates they've made, you can do that too. Now we gotta talk about something really important that few people actually spend time thinking about before they dive in head first into a new app, and that's privacy and encryption. Of these four apps, Notability has, to my knowledge, no privacy, no encryption. If you have important information that you really need to safeguard, maybe it's business information, you just don't wanna get hacked, or you're worried about government snooping, whatever it is, you wanna store that in either Apple Notes or Obsidian. Apple, though, just came out with the new advanced data protection option, which is something that Apple users can opt into or opt out of, which is gonna give you full end-to-end -end encryption in Apple Notes and in several other Apple apps as well. Now, Obsidian does have an end-to-end -end encryption option, but by default, if you're just storing it on your desktop, let's say, your Obsidian folder, or in iCloud, it may not be fully encrypted. If you use Obsidian Sync, however, which does cost a little bit, $8 a month, then you can get that end-to-end -end encryption, which so many people find important. Notion is kind of weird though. Because of the search functionality, so we're told, Notion doesn't want to incorporate end-to-end -end encryption. What they do instead is sort of an in-between thing that gives you a lot of encryption, but you're not fully encrypted. And that's because their encryption is only at rest and in transit. All right, let's talk about pricing. A lot of times I get comments like, how could you feature this app that costs money? You know, well, look, you do get what you pay for oftentimes. Now, Apple Notes is and always will be completely free. That is, if you don't count the cost of the device that you bought that was really expensive that let you use Apple Notes. <laughs> Notion is free to get started with, but there's also an $8 a month upgrade. So that upgrade's gonna get you unlimited blocks. Notion uses blocks for information. Better for Teams, unlimited file uploads, 
30 day page history. Obsidian is also free and basically everything you'd ever want there is free. There's no account needed to sign up. It's great, you still get community support and access to the plugins. But if you want that end to end encrypted sync, that's gonna be $8 a month and it also gives you priority email support. Or you can go up to $16 if you want to publish. All right, now a few other considerations. Backlinking, what is backlinking? Backlinking means that you've created a note that you can reference from other notes. You can link to one note from another. Now, Obsidian is the master of this with their knowledge graph, okay? Notion does do this, but you miss out on the knowledge graph. Apple Notes, unfortunately, does not have backlinking baked in as a feature. And then notability, no backlinks but that's not probably a feature that a lot of people have been clamoring for there. Although backlinks in Muse, which I don't use for note taking, I use it for kind of conceptualizing things, just came there, backlink cards, and that's really cool. Let's talk about the Apple Pencil or stylus usage within notes. For a lot of people on the iPad, that's really important, okay? If you wanna use the Apple Pencil, you're gonna wanna steer towards either Apple Notes or Notability. Obviously, Notability, like I said, is stylus first, and it's thinking with the option to add on text. I feel like uh, Apple Notes is like 50-50, right? You're gonna feel at home whether you mostly type or whether you mostly handwrite, or if you do a mix. Obsidian is not the app for you if you're into handwriting anything or sketching, because it's just text-based. They do have that Canvas feature, but no Apple Pencil support yet. If that comes, it could be killer. And then I would just say, think about, are you using a lot of media? You know, Are you throwing in a bunch of screenshots and stuff? For me, without getting into my whole system, I put that kind of stuff into my mind because it's chaotic, it's unorganized, I don't have to think about it, and when I search for it, it's just there. But if you want that in your Notes app, then probably Apple Notes or Notion would be the way to go. You get databases with Notion. You can actually build like a fully functioning web app <laughs> if you use Notion and publish it online using a front end like Super. I'll link that up for you as well. And, and you know, you can put images and stuff inside of Notability and kind of write on that. Okay, and Obsidian, you're just gonna wanna steer clear. You can put stuff in the Canvas feature, but it's just not all the way there yet. Very briefly, let me just mention some great alternatives to the apps that I've talked about so you can kind of get a survey at least of what else is out there. Bear is a really great, simple, markdown-focused app whose killer feature might be that it has an Apple Watch app. There's also Agenda, which is definitely unique in that it's a date-focused approach to note-taking. If you're looking for a beautifully designed note-taking app that's still kind of like run-of-the-mill, par for the course in terms of features, check out Noted, which is an Apple Design Award winner. But this is a super sleek interface, and it also has audio recording for simultaneous audio notes as well. I have to mention Craft here, it's a must. I know people are gonna freak out that I didn't include it as one of the big four, but Craft is basically Notion with a more beautiful interface. You know, that's the main distinguisher. One thing I like about it is that it has AI built in already, but you know what it's really lacking is all of Notion's integrations. And yeah, you can hack stuff together with Zapier or IFTTT or something, but you know, it's a hassle for most people. The last one I wanna mention is called LogSec, L-O-G-S-E-Q. And this is basically Obsidian, but with the feel of an outliner. So if you've ever used like Workflowy, you know, you might know what I'm talking about, but it adds some cool stuff here. You got to do's, audio recording, you can integrate YouTube and Twitter stuff. LogSec, I feel like is sort of like the hipster obsidian. <laughs> so let's do a quick overview. If you're looking for simple, go with Apple Notes. If you're looking for comprehensive, I would say take a shortcut to Notion. If you're really into text-based minimalistic notes, hit Obsidian. And finally, if stylus first handwritten stuff is your thing, go with Notability. Hopefully you found this very comprehensive guide useful and you've been steered in a good direction. Don't forget to sign up for updates on my productivity course. I'm so excited for this thing. It's gonna be mind blowing. I literally think it will be life changing for so many people. We got a newsletter and it's so useful. You know, if you want app and accessory discovery on autopilot, you have to sign up for that. It comes out once a week on Fridays. Other than that, I will catch you in the next video. Later.